in the hours after President Biden's stunning announcement and outpouring of support for his vice president. A spokesperson for Kamala Harris says she raked in nearly $50 million from donors uh, since yesterday's announcement. She's also secured endorsements from some of the biggest names in Democratic politics, including the Clintons, former Secretary of State John Kerry, and Senator Elizabeth Warren. Of course, a lot more there on your screen. Let's discuss that with Democratic Congressman John Garamendi of California. He's a member of the Congressional Progressive Caucus. Of course, a fellow Californian. Uh, Congressman, thanks so much uh, for being here. I guess, first of all, your reaction uh, to President Biden dropping out, and I assume you are endorsing Kamala Harris. Uh, what do you say? Well, first of all, let's start with an extraordinary president who made a decision for this country and for the future by stepping out of this race. I've known uh, President Biden since 1988, where I supported him when he was running for president. And ever since then, I've worked closely with an extraordinary individual that put together legislation unequaled and set the nation up for a very good, solid economic future in which all Americans can participate. So I'm sad about that, that that's happened. But also, I'm very, very excited about Kamala Harris. I've worked with her since 1991 when she was the district attorney in San Francisco and I was the new insurance commissioner. We went after insurance fraud. We were down at a um, auto repair shop where some fraud was going on, made the arrest right there. She's an extraordinary person and Trump is going to find his match far beyond equal here. This is a woman that knows how to uh, go after fraudsters and criminals. And guess what? Trump is a certified felon. So we'll see. This is going to be a very, very interesting match. And the issues are solid for the Democrats here. So it sounds like she has your endorsement. I, let me ask you this. Uh, apparently, in the last several minutes, uh, the House Speaker, Mike Johnson, uh, has been talking to reporters up on Capitol Hill. He s said that uh, President Biden should step down. Uh, and he suggested that state uh, officials around the country on the Republican side are going to be challenging uh, putting uh, Kamala Harris on the top of the ticket. Let me play that, get your response to that. And I think that's a real problem, and I think uh, there'll be a lot said about that in the days ahead. So you expect lawsuits, plenty of new lawsuits? Well, look, if it violates the rules in some of these states, I expect that there will be litigation over that. So we'll see how it develops. We're doing our job here in Washington. The states will be handling that. But I do think it's problematic. I think millions of the American people believe that this is problematic. This is not the way the system is supposed to work. There's a reason it's unprecedented. You don't just, you know, steamroll. Uh, the rules in the process because you decide that your candidate is no longer suitable. That's what's happened here. I think everybody can see it for themselves, and we'll see how uh, the campaign unfurls. Well, you you uh, Congressman, what do you make of that comment uh, from the speaker saying there's going to be litigation in all these states? It's laughable. I was having a hard time not going with a big belly laugh here. Just who the hell does he think he is? Messing with the Democrats, the Republicans, whining about now they've got a very serious problem. They've got a candidate for on the Democratic side that is going to whip the Republicans. We got a, we've got a prosecutor that is going to be taking on a certified felon in the presidential election. And I understand why they're so concerned. Just who do they think they are messing around in the Democratic uh, politics? They can't even take care of themselves. So let's get out of there, Mike Johnson. Pay attention to your own party and don't go messing around with the Democrat Party. It's all legal. They're, of course, this is the Trump playbook, isn't it? When you're going down, start suing. Get the lawyers out there and start suing. More of the same. And is the Democratic Party prepared for this? Of course we are. Of course we are. We're going to go into the convention with a very, very strong ticket. Kamala Harris is lining up the endorsement and support of the Democratic rank and file across this nation. Certainly she has mine, and she has many, many other members of Congress and undoubtedly have a great majority of them. The rules are Democratic rules. Republicans, don't go mess with our primary. Don't go mess with our convention. Go take care of yourself because you're going to need a lot of help because we're going to have a very strong, very united Democratic Party going into the convention and coming out of the convention. All right, Congressman Garamendi, thanks very much for your time. We appreciate it.
Harris raised more than $49 million in grassroots donations since the Biden announcement. And we could be hearing, as I mentioned, could be hearing from her for the very first time this morning. That's where our Eva McKend comes in outside the Naval Observatory for us again this morning. Eva, what are we expecting to happen today? Yeah, Kate, later this morning, she will give remarks honoring NCAA championship teams. Uh, we don't know as yet if she will address this shakeup in the Democratic ticket or if she will want President Biden to have that first opportunity. What we do know, Kate, is that she has been working the phones, speaking to President Obama, uh, speaking to the Clintons, speaking to governors, members of Congress, faith leaders. She prayed with her, her pastor uh, yesterday to really... Uh, strengthen her in the weeks ahead. I spoke to the head of the Congressional Black Caucus and he told me that she's under no illusion that she will just be able to waltz into this. Uh, she knows that she is going to have to work for this nomination despite the fact that she got President Biden's endorsement. Now something that she has on her side is the support of key Democratic coalitions, groups like Higher Heights, uh, Black Voters Matter, uh, for instance, thousands of black women on a, an hours long call yesterday strategizing about the best way to support her uh, uh, in the weeks ahead. Also of consequence, though, is who is she going to tap for her running mate? That is the big question right now. Governor Andy Bashir, Kentucky's governor, is one of the names on that list. Take a listen to what he had to say about her earlier this morning. As a, as a prosecutor, as an attorney general like I used to be, uh, she prosecuted uh, rapists, domestic uh, abusers, stood for victims and put away uh, those, those abusers. Now, now look at the other side, where J.D. Vance calls pregnancy arising from rape inconvenient. No, it's just plain wrong. You know, one thing is for sure, Kate, her allies are really eager for this matchup between her and Trump to come into focus. They believe that she has a strong case to make and that she can be a, a, a compelling uh, candidate as a former prosecutor going up against a convicted felon. Kate? It's great to see you, Ava. Thank you so much. Sarah? All right, this morning we're learning part uh, of Biden's decision to drop out came down to a conversation with two of his closest advisors who told him that a path to victory was basically non-existent. CNN's Arlette Signs is in Rehoboth Beach, Delaware. Arlette, um, what is next? What happens next for this administration? He is staying in office, to be clear. Yes, White House officials have stressed that President Biden does intend to remain in office. And at this time right now, he is currently still here in Rehoboth Beach, Delaware, at his home where he's been recovering since COVID, uh, after his COVID diagnosis uh, last week. Now, the last uh, 48 hours have really been a trying one for President Biden as he reached that difficult decision to bow out of this 2024 campaign and throw his full support behind his vice president, Kamala Harris. For the president's part, in announcing his decision not to seek re-election. He said that he does plan to address the nation uh, at some point about this. We're still learning, trying to learn when exactly President Biden will return to the White House. Much of the president's schedule right now is contingent on him clearing COVID and actually returning to the White House. We've also learned that his meeting with Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu uh, likely would occur mid to late la in the week, although they're still working to try to uh, firm up that timing due to his COVID diagnosis. Biden had also been scheduled to travel out west for campaign fundraising. He was going to have at least one fundraiser in California on Friday. It's unclear whether that will proceed. But President Biden really has thrown his full support between uh, behind Vice President Kamala Harris. You have also seen the Biden-Harris campaign really transition their apparatus to supporting Harris's campaign now. They have changed social media sites from Biden HQ to Kamala HQ. They've changed logos. They also have been really pushing their fund raising machine uh, to try to turn out and get more uh, support uh, for financial support for Harris's uh, candidacy. As you noted earlier, the campaign brought in $49.6 million 
in the last days since Biden endorsed Harris uh, to become the Democratic nominee. Donors have told CNN that they are feeling re-energized about giving to the Harris campaign uh, in the wake of this decision from President Biden yesterday. But still, as Eva noted, there is still a long road ahead for Vice President Kamala Harris as she is trying to secure this uh, Democratic nomination, uh, saying yesterday that she plans to earn and win that heading into the August convention.